So, this, this last few lectures we have been looking at convergence of iterative schemes for solving linear algebraic equations. Starting from uh, the basic equation for way the error evolves. So, we had this iteration scheme, we had this iteration scheme to solve a x equal to b and a was written as s minus t and we said that the error which is defined as iterate x k minus the true solution x star, this evolves according to E k plus 1, this is a linear difference equation. It evolves according to this linear difference equation. Now, from this, from this we abstracted from this we abstracted a linear difference equation problem. We said essentially we have to look at equations of this type and z0 is initial condition, z0 is the initial condition and then we wanted to come up with the way of analyzing asymptotic behavior of the solution as k tends to infinity. So, we came up with, with analysis based on eigenvalues, we came up with a condition that if rho b is nothing but max over i lambda i, that means if lambda i are eigenvalues of matrix b, lambda i are eigenvalues of matrix b, we find out its absolute value where eigenvalues can be complex. So, you find the absolute value and rho b this is called as spectral radius, this is called a spectral radius and we said that or we showed that the necessary and sufficient condition if rho b that means spectral radius of matrix b is strictly less than 1, we said that the uh, if the spectral radius of matrix B is strictly less than 1, then the sequence zk norm of that will tend to 0 as k tends to infinity. So, and from this we again connected to our original problem, we said which means that if spectral radius of S inverse t is strictly less than 1, then this is necessary and sufficient condition for convergence of error okay for convergence of error the error will the error of between the true solution and the guess solution will diminish to zero if this condition is satisfied <coughs> okay i'm just doing a recap of what we have done till now so from this point we again had some difficulty because we have to compute eigen values so we said well eigen value computations are difficult and then we used one more result to come up with a sufficient condition. So, we said that spectral radius of matrix B is always less than or equal to any induced norm of matrix B. Spectral radius of matrix B is less than induced norm of matrix B. What is induced norm? Induced norm This is induced norm, induced by the norm defined on the range space and the domain space. So, this norm of a matrix is nothing but amplification power or something like a gain of a matrix, uh, if you can uh, think about it uh, as a gain or amplification power. So, if and then we came up with a sufficient condition that if induced norm is less than 1, obviously spectral radius is less than 1 and convergence is guaranteed. If induced norm is greater than 1, we cannot say anything. Okay. If induced norm is less than 1, we are sure. So, we had a, another condition that if 
if induced norm is strictly less than 1, then spectral radius of B is strictly less than 1 and then this implies that asymptotically norm uh, this means asymptotically norm of iterate z k or difference equation z k will go to 0 as k goes to infinity. So, this we can say without actually having to solve it. Okay. Now, uh, in particular we talked about infinite norm or one norm which are more convenient for doing calculations. Okay. And now based on this I wanted to derive some results which are even more simpler. I do not probably have to even compute the norm. I can compute uh, what is called as diagonal dominance. So, in my last lecture I talked about diagonal dominance. So, I wanted to further cash on this result that if the induced norm is less than 1, then of course, the spectral radius is less than 1. Induced norm is very, very easy to compute particularly 1 and infinite norm as compared uh, to uh, computing the spectral radius. So, checking whether a particular iteration will converge or not is very, very easy. Okay. Now, let us move back to the thing that we have done in my last lecture. So, this was overview of the entire stability arguments that we have been giving. Uh, well, I wanted to derive something more specific from uh, the previous results. So, uh, we come back here, we are trying to solve for uh, A x equal to B and A has been split as S minus T. So, for Jacobi method, I in particular I analyze Jacobi method. Okay. For Jacobi method, S is equal to well, we are also writing S as we are writing A as L plus D plus U. This is strictly lower triangular part of A, this is diagonal part of A, and this is strictly upper triangular part of A. So, S is equal to D and T is equal to minus minus L minus U. <coughs> and then I defined then I defined the concept of strict diagonal dominance. If you take sum of absolute values of elements of matrix A in a row except the diagonal element and if that sum is strictly less than the sum is strictly less than uh, you know the diagonal element then the matrix is called as diagonally dominant matrix. Okay? Just to give you a simple example. Well, any you just write any matrix in which let us say this is my matrix A, this is my matrix A, this is the diagonal, these are the diagonal elements. These are the diagonal elements here. Just have a look. If I take absolute sum of this, 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 it is smaller than this. I take absolute sum of this, 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 this smaller than this. Okay. I just look at this, I just look at this matrix, I look at its diagonal elements. Okay. It, this, this particular matrix will obey this condition. This is a strictly diagonal dominant matrix. Just look at this, just look at this, this is 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1, it is always less than 15. Okay. Same thing here. Okay, five plus three plus one plus nine is less than twenty-three. So I am taking absolute values. Okay, 
So, so for this particular matrix, can you calculate what is going to be what is going to be Jacobi matrix, which is what is S inverse T? Can you calculate that? Just do it. What is S inverse T? Well, mind you again that Jacobi matrix. When you actually do computations, you never compute S inverse. You do row by row calculations. Okay, this is for analysis. It's for getting insights. But what you will realize is that you just look at the diagonal elements. You look at the sum of the off diagonal elements. You can say whether the iterations are going to converge or not. Okay, which is very very powerful result. You don't have to actually solve it. And this is true for five cross five, for ten cross ten, for thousand cross thousand. If this condition holds, iterations will converge. Okay, so you are guaranteed convergence if you if this condition is satisfied. So what will be S inversity? What will be Jacobi matrix? Let's call this Jacobi matrix. Uh, S inversity, or for Jacobi matrix, S inversity, what will it be? This will be zero. It will be minus one. Minus one. Uh, one zero two divided by minus five minus five minus five. Then this will be one zero three minus two two divided by nine 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 nine. Okay, minus l minus u. Then what is this? Two, four, zero, three, minus one. This divided by fifteen, 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 and fifteen. Okay. Then the next one is one uh, minus five. Minus three, zero, and minus nine divided by minus twenty-three, minus twenty-three, and the last row is minus one by five, minus one by five, one by five, zero, zero. Okay. Now, what will be the infinite norm of this matrix? You take absolute of rho sum. You take absolute of so absolute of this plus absolute of this plus absolute of this. Okay, absolute of all these things, all these all these numbers. Is it always going to be less than one? It's always going to be less than one because this matrix is strictly diagonally dominant. Okay, the denominator, some in the numerator, this will appear. Okay, actually, for a diagonally dominant matrix, what you know is that this divided by norm a i i, this will be strictly less than one. This will be strictly less than one. You can see here, you add absolute of each one of these rows. Okay, if each one of them is less than one, the maximum is also going to be less than one. What does it mean? Spectral radius of this matrix, spectral radius of this matrix, is strictly less than one. So, if A is diagonally dominant, the Jacobi matrix which you get by S inversity has spectral radius strictly less than one, which means Jacobi iterations will converge without having to solve it for arbitrary initial guess. Very, very important. For an arbitrary initial guess. Okay, so any initial guess I give, even if it is completely wrong, my solution will, my iterations will converge to the true solution. Okay, if diagonal dominance condition is met, so you can just check diagonal dominance of a matrix very very easily, and then you know whether the solution is going to be obtained or not. Okay, that is that is straightforward. Now there are many more results 
of uh, how do you analyze the convergence behavior and all of them I am not going to prove. I have stated those results here in the and I am just going to state them and show you how to apply them and the proofs for each one of them or at least most of them some of them you can derive yourself for most of them are included at the end of the chapter that is end of the notes in the appendix ok. I do not want to go over it in the class you got the philosophy of how it is done and uh, you have to look at the proofs in the appendix to understand more of this because we cannot spend time on this beyond a certain point uh, as long as you get the philosophy it is fine. Now what are the more results? There are some more results which exploit the structure of matrix A. One, one structure that we exploit is diagonal dominance, right? The other thing we will show is that if matrix A is symmetric positive definite, okay, if matrix A is symmetric and positive definite, then uh, Jacobi and Gauss Seidel methods, Gauss Seidel method converges. Also, you can show that if matrix A is diagonally dominant, Gauss Seidel method will converge. Okay, uh, the proof is the proof is little more involved, and you should look at uh, the proof given in the appendix. I have given details of the proofs in the proof in the appendix. So, if matrix A is diagonally dominant, Jacobi iterations will converge. It is also true that if matrix A is diagonally dominant, then Gauss serial iterations also will converge. Okay, so you just have to check for diagonal dominance you know that Gauss Hill iterations will converge and in fact uh, a heuristic is that most of the times Gauss Hill iterations converge faster than Jacobi iterations. Okay, so if you know that a matrix is diagonally dominant your preferred choice or of using the method should be Gauss Hill method not Jacobi method. Okay, there are other uh, theorems. So, the first theorem that you should know about uh, convergence of iteration scheme is that if matrix is diagonally dominant A matrix, okay, then uh, Jacobi method as well as Gauss Seidel methods will converge to the true solution. Okay. The next result is by the way remember this, this is a sufficient condition, this is not a necessary condition. What does it mean? That if this condition holds, Jacobi and Gauss Seidel methods will converge. If this condition does not hold, even then these, these you cannot say, if this condition does not hold, you cannot say anything about convergence. You have to go back and check something else. You have to go back and check spectral radius. Okay. So, this is only a sufficient condition. If this happens, you are guaranteed convergence will occur. If this does not happen, we do not know. We cannot say anything. Okay. So, this is a sufficient condition, not necessary condition. The other result is, so the second result I would say, the first result was very, very important result. So, this symmetric positive definite line seems to be something very, very nice. It seems to help us everywhere we go. Okay. And I will just show you how you can, uh, now you might start saying well I have been given this matrix, I have been given this matrix A and you know only in very very special cases this A will be symmetric positive definite, is not it? A is a square matrix, A is a square matrix. Huh? I am not talking about now least square where we had a you know a tall matrix. I am just talking about A is a square matrix and my given problem, the problem which is given to me is, is such that A is not symmetric positive definite. Okay. But I know that Gauss Seidel method or Jacobi Gauss Seidel method will converge. Okay. Sufficient condition for convergence is that if the matrix in my problem is symmetric positive definite, is there something that I do? to solve this problem, to convert this problem into symmetric positive definite matrix. Very good, excellent. I just pre-multiply this equation with A transpose. 
So, this gives me A transpose A. Okay. I do not have to solve for A x equal to B. I can instead solve for A transpose A is equal to A transpose B. Okay. I am guaranteed convergence. So, I am using my theory to change the problem in such a way that I am guaranteed to get converged solution. Okay. I am going to solve this problem using Gauss serial iterations making use of this theorem. Okay. How do I make use of this theorem to modify my calculations? I pre multiply both sides by A transpose. This becomes a symmetric positive definite matrix. Okay. Now, if I apply Gauss serial method to this matrix and this problem, this transform problem, I am guaranteed to get a solution. This solution is obviously a solution of if it is a solution of this, it is also a solution of this. You have no problem with that. So, I could solve this transform problem instead of solving this problem. I get a symmetric positive definite matrix here. Okay. I am using theory to modify my calculations to I will just give you an example here. I, s I will start with. So, I want to solve for A x equal to B. And my A matrix is uh, 4, 5, 9, 7, 1, 6, 5, 2, 9. And my B vector is 1, 1, 1. Okay. Let us say I want to solve this by Gauss serial iterations. Okay. So, well what I will do is I am now I am not this is not a solution procedure this is analysis. Okay. From analysis what I know is that if I write this matrix as uh, if I did write this matrix as A matrix if I call this S and if I call this as T okay. if I call this as S and if I call this as T then doing Gauss serial iterations is equivalent to then my S inverse T my S inverse T will be 4 0 0 7 1 0 this is my S inverse T. If I were to use the raw matrix A, if I were to use raw matrix A, and in this case, the spectral radius of S inverse T turns out to be 7.3, which is strictly less than 1. Okay. If I use Gauss serial iterations, iterations are not going to converge. Because if I just use the raw matrix A, that matrix is neither nominally diagonally dominant. Just check it is diagonally dominant. It is not. Is it symmetric matrix? It is not a symmetric matrix. Forget about positive definite edge. It is not symmetric matrix. But if I know this little bit of information, okay, then okay, if I do this transformation, that is A transpose A x is equal to A transpose B. Okay. Then this A transpose A matrix, it turns out to be 90, 37 okay. and this A transpose, this is A transpose A, A transpose B becomes 16, 8, 24 and now if I apply Gauss serial method to this matrix to this equation transformed equation then then the S inverse T spectral radius of S inverse T it turns out to be 0.96 okay so for this for the transform problem for the transform problem I am guaranteed conversions of Gauss serial method this is a symmetric matrix just see this symmetric matrix. It is a positive definite matrix by definition. A transpose A is always positive definite even if A is not positive definite. 
We have seen this several times. Okay. So this is positive definite matrix, symmetric matrix, convergence is guaranteed. Just pre-multiplying both sides by A transpose, I can ensure that I will get convergence by iterative method. Okay. So in the case where obvious things like diagonal dominance are not there, if you want to ensure that you get convergence, just pre-multiply by A transpose both sides and then use gauss seidel you are guaranteed convergence very very powerful result yeah huh. other diverge so the this that spectral radius should be less than 1 is necessary and sufficient condition it's necessary if the convergence occurs spectral radius sh should be less than 1 if, if spectral radius is less than 1 convergence will occur okay so, but that is not the case with the norm. If induced norm is less than 1, convergence will occur. But if induced norm is greater than 1, convergence may or may not occur. You do not know. Okay. That is not the case with spectral radius. Spectral radius is the absolute uh, measure which will necessary and sufficient condition for. Okay. So, it is possible to transform. Uh, there are more results of this type. Again, I am not going to go into the proof. For relaxation method, for relaxation method, well, uh, we have this result. For relaxation method, what you can show again is the proof is again given in the appendix you should go and look at it I will look at it if omega is chosen between 0 and 2 well actually for relaxation method we want to choose it between 1 and 2 because we showed that omega equal to 1 is equivalent to uh, gauss serial iteration so we want to choose it between 1 and 2 but in general if omega is between 0 and 2 okay we are uh, this is a necessary condition for convergence okay so you cannot choose omega, you know how to choose omega, you have a guideline here. Okay. Uh, so, this again remember this is only a necessary condition, this is not sufficient. If you choose less than 2 that does not mean uh, convergence has to occur, but if convergence occurs uh, only when you choose omega is less than 2. And well the uh, this necessary condition the the this is result 3 and the necessary condition becomes necessary and sufficient conditions if uh, extension to this theorem is another result that if this is for an arbitrary matrix okay this is for an arbitrary matrix now if a is symmetric and positive definite. So, if matrix A is symmetric positive definite, okay, then uh, this condition necessary condition becomes a necessary and sufficient condition. Okay. Now, you know how to transform the problem which is originally not symmetric positive definite to symmetric positive definite matrix. Okay. So, what I want to do the take, take home message is that all these results, all these theorems uh, are very very useful in shaping your calculations. You should know how to make sure that convergence occurs. Convergence is very very important. And then whenever you are not sure in a in a arbitrary large scale problem where you are not sure about A matrix how it is going to be. If you want to use iterative schemes for solving A x equal to B, uh, it is better to use it is better to use uh, you know uh, a relaxation method in which you transform the problem because in general relaxation method will will converge faster than uh, gauss seidel method I'll, I'll just show you in a very small example that uh, jacobi method is the slowest to converge typically uh, gauss seidel method is faster and if you choose omega properly then uh, the relaxation method will even converge faster okay now how do you choose omega such that you get very very fast conversions. It is very difficult to tell a priori. You probably have to compute eigenvalues, but that is not desirable. 
you don't want to really compute the eigen values uh, so you have to develop some kind of uh, you know uh, experience in beyond the point you have to use all these theorems and understand the theory and then develop experience to tweak with the calculations that's very very important okay so i'll just show you one simple example this is taken from strang's book but it is very very illustrative very simple problem so i want to solve and such a simple problem of course you don't need any of the iterative methods two cross two systems you can sans solve it by hand so my a matrix is 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 well you will say that this is uh jacobi and gauss theorem will converge why symmetric diagonally dominant okay so anyway but that is not the point the point is the jacobi for jacobi method s inverse t will be 0 half half 0 and the spectral radius is equal to half okay and for gauss seidel method s inverse t this turns out to be 0 0 half 1 by 4 and spectral radius is s inverse t okay the spectral radius is given by this actually spectral radius maximum magnitude eigen value of s inverse t is an indicator also of the performance okay now there are two aspects it should be less than 1 okay now how much it is less than 1 how close it is to 0 that also matters in terms of the rate of convergence whether the convergence is guaranteed or not is decided by whether it is strictly less than 1 okay that is the stability criteria the performance is given by how much it is less than 1 okay so this method jacobi method in which spectral radius is half okay converges slower than converges slower than uh, the gauss seidel method okay because the spectral radius here is 1/4 in fact it, you can almost if you if you start doing calculations you will see that one step of gauss seidel will be almost equal to two steps of jacobi okay so the gauss seidel can move much faster because the spectral this is you cannot show it for every matrix there is no proof that gauss seidel always converges but in general in general gauss seidel converges faster than and the reason is typically spectral radius of s inversity for gauss seidel is less than okay that is the that is the reason now what if i formulate the relaxation method so you can al almost show that because of this one uh gs iteration is equivalent to two one gauss seidel iteration is equivalent to two jacobi iterations okay because spectral radius in this case is even smaller now for relaxation method you know for relaxation method s inverse t turns out to be inverse of this matrix 0 omega minus omega here 2 inverse 2 into 1 minus omega omega 0 2 into 1 minus omega and of course we should choose omega between we want to choose omega between 1 and 2 we want it to be greater than 1 because if it is equal to 1 it is nothing but gauss seidel method okay we want to be greater than 1 now actually uh now for this simple case two cross two matrix you can actually find out what is the best value of omega that will enhance the convergence what is the optimum value okay for different choices of diff omega you will get different spectral radius 
Okay, we can actually find out uh, which value of omega will. This is this is just again to tell you uh, emphasize this. This is only to get insight. Okay, in the real real problem, I am not going to compute optimum omega by doing some. I have to tune, give a guess for omega. Okay, so if you use some properties of matrices, then uh, you know that lambda one and lambda two. If these two are eigenvalues of S inverse T, then that is equal to determinant of uh, S inverse T, which turns out to be in this case. If you take determinant of that, it will be one minus omega, one minus omega whole square. Okay, and you know the other property. You know this property. Multiplication of eigenvalues of a matrix is same as determinant, and then what is the other property? Trace. So lambda one plus lambda two is equal to trace of. So this will turn out to be uh, two minus two omega plus omega square by four. Now, if you plot, if you plot this, that is, if you plot S inverse T versus omega, if you plot spectral radius using these two, these two relationships, you can find out lambda one, lambda two, and the spectral radius. And if you plot this, uh, you will find that. Well, uh, getting the optimum is not very difficult. If you plot this, you will find that the optimum value. If you plot this, the optimum value for which uh, the spectral radius is minimum. You know, you will get an you will get a point where you will get a minimum uh, value of the spectral radius. Okay, so that value turns out to be uh, omega optimum is equal to. 1.07. Okay, and the spectral radius of S inverse T for this omega is 0.07. Okay, I'm skipping some steps. You can see here in the notes. That's not important. What I want to point out here is that if you are able to choose omega properly, then this is 0.07. So we had we had three situations. Uh, you know, Jacobi method. Then Gauss Seidel method and relaxation method. The S inverse T spectral radius in this case was half. This was one fourth, and this is, you know, uh, 0 0.07, which is almost one fourth of this. So one, we said one iteration, one iteration of Gauss Seidel was two Jacobi iterations. What can what can you say about one relaxation iteration? It's like one relaxation iteration is like four Gauss Seidel iterations, okay, and almost like eight Jacobi iterations. So relaxation method can converge even faster. Typically, values close to one, one point, one point one, one point two are used. This is thumb rule and uh, not substantiated. I think uh, Strang gives some clue that you can use it close to one point two, but. Uh, it's hard to say generally what what value of omega will make conversions very very fast, okay. But uh, so the tricks that you, you should use is first of all make sure that either the matrix is diagonally dominant, check whether the matrix is diagonally dominant. If it is not, okay. To ensure conversions, you should pre-multiply both the sides by a transpose. That will make it symmetric positive net. I am guaranteed conversions, okay. But I want conversions faster than Gauss Seidel. Gauss Seidel is better than, in general, Gauss Seidel is better than Jacobi, so I will apply Gauss Seidel and I can make conversions faster even going to relaxation method. So, probably I should all use all these tricks and use relaxation method to enhance my conversions. That is how I should uh, proceed with uh, arranging my calculations. So, this brings us to end of this analysis. What is uh, important here? Is that uh, there are many take home, take home messages? One of one of the thing is that eigenvalues is one of the prime tools for analyzing behavior qualitatively, asymptotically. I don't have to solve. 
That is the beauty of this tool. I don't have to solve the problem. I can just look at eigenvalues or I can, in this case, it turns out finally, I can just look at diagonal dominance. I can see whether the convert the problem to a symmetric positive definite matrix. I am guaranteed conversions of my iterative scheme. Very, very powerful result. In fact, eigenvalues are used for convergence analysis in engineering literature in many, many, many ways. Okay. Well, most of you, I think, have done the first course in chemical engineering on chemical process control, right? And in process control, if you, uh, well, you may not have connected it to the eigenvalues in the first course, but actually what you can show is that uh, if you write a differential equation for a local linear differential equation for evolution of the system dynamics, then the so-called roots of the characteristic polynomial are nothing but eigenvalues of certain matrix which governs the system dynamics. Okay. And if eigenvalues are on the left half plane and then you know what was the what was nice thing about eigenvalues there or roots of the characteristic polynomial? You don't have to solve. You just look at the roots, whether they are lying in the this half of the plane or this of the plane, you can tell how the system is going to behave asymptotically without having to solve. Okay. Same thing is here. Without having to solve, I can tell whether my iterations will converge or not. Okay. Also, using necessary sufficient conditions, I can go and modify my problem to make sure that conversions will occur. Okay. This is more important than the algorithm per se. Algorithm you will learn, you will learn to uh, program it or nowadays, I think these algorithms might be available on the net, you might download it. Okay. Algorithm might be very well written, that does not mean the convergence is going to occur. Okay. You should know why convergence occurs and then make sure that you transform the problem in such a way that convergence occurs. That is important. Okay. So, uh, this brings us to end of this. Uh, now, there are two more things that I need to do. Well, uh, because we missed one lecture, uh, some timetable is disturbed, but I will try to make up, make up for it. Uh, we will, I uh, will try to cover uh, gradient based or optimization based iterative methods for solving A x equal to B. Okay. So now, till now, I formulated iterations in one particular way by splitting the matrix and in fact, row by row calculations, not really splitting the matrix. The way the iterations were derived were doing row by row calculations. Okay. My next aim is going to be, instead of doing that, can I iteratively solve this problem? Well, can I solve, if I want to solve A x equal to B, Okay. Uh, well, if I take a guess solution, the true solution is let us say x star. Okay. And if x k is my guess solution, then obviously e k, now my e k has a different definition. E k is B minus A X K. Okay. This is not going to be 0. When this is equal to X star, it will be equal to 0. If X K is equal to X star, this is equal to 0. The way I want to solve this problem is, is minimize uh, objective function, scalar objective function phi is defined as E transpose E that is a x minus b transpose a x minus b with respect to x. Okay. I do not want to solve this, I do not want to solve this. Uh, well, you will say that if you apply to the necessary condition for optimality, you will get uh, you know dou phi by dou x equal to 0 that will give you a transpose a x. If you apply this condition dou phi by dou x equal to 0, then you will get a transpose a x is equal to a transpose b. I do not want to solve this. I do not want to go by this route. I want to go iteratively. Okay. I want to guess, I want to guess x 0 and by some method, I want to go to x 1 then I want to go to 
x2 and so on. And then I want to see whether this iteration converges. We are going to use what is called as the gradient search. Okay, one of the fundamental methods in optimization, gradient based search. So we'll look at gradient search, and then there is one more method called conjugate gradient search, which we'll look at next. Okay, that is one thing which I want to do. After having done that, we have talked about iterative schemes for solving AX equal to B, and then we move on to a very, very fundamental issue, matrix conditioning. Which problems are inherently ill-conditioned? Which problems are well-conditioned? How do I classify and say that this is an ill-conditioned problem, whatever I do, I am going to end up into some trouble. This is a well-conditioned problem. If I am getting wrong solution, I have made a mistake. Okay? So well-conditioned problems, you know, absurd solutions, you have made a mistake. Ill-conditioned problems, absurd solutions, well, you can't do much. How do you classify ill-conditioned from well-conditioned is the next thing. That will bring us to end of this module.